Good morning, good morning, good morning. All praise is due to God, the Most High. Amen. I'm here with Reverend Dr. Tonya Smith. Jesus is Lord Healing Ministry. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Today, you help us, God, that we have to continue moving forward, motivating ourselves, knowing what we're supposed to do and doing it with His grace and his mercy. Close your eyes wherever you are. Immortal God, invisible God, Dominic Potent and Dominic Science God. As it enables you, Father, that we will be alive today, we say thank you, Lord. I'm thanking you for anyone that missed a chance, O oh Lord, to witness with me about your words that will help us to move forward in life, O King of Glory. I pray that this word, O oh Father God, will accomplish the purpose of us being together. And I pray that healing and deliverance will take place, transformation also will take place. Father, I pray that success and achievement will, be, will take place. Long life, Father God, may the Holy Spirit speak in me, within me, and through me, and bring out your glory in every area of our life. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. Because I know it is not by my power, neither by my strength, but all by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters out there, today we are going to talk about the three keys of success. The three keys of sources why sources a lot of times we struggle in order to overcome a lot of things in our life but sometimes in the middle of the way it seems as things are not working Sometimes it creeps to some people and they cannot move forward. But today, we've got to remind ourselves that a man falls seven times and then he rises seven times. Amen. Amen. So the three keys of success, number one is vision. In life, you've got to have vision or somebody or some people call it dream because when you have a vision it will help you it will give you the grace to fulfill that vision number two you got to think and think and think again thinking and thinking means as you start your journey of your vision Many times, vision has challenges. And when the challenges arose, all you got to know, all you got to do is to think. You have to go back and think and think again. Because in thinking and thinking again, it will help you to realize or analyze what is needed for you to move forward in your vision. Number three, determination. And we all know that determination leads to success. If you don't have vision, you can never determine to accomplish that vision. But when you have vision, you make a great determination in your life that you will never give up no matter what. As far as the Lord have says, that the earth is of the Lord. And because the earth is of the Lord, 
he sent us to possess our possession and have dominion over everything that he created. And this is going to be a question on the last day. What happened? Why did you achieve the purpose of you being in this world? There is a purpose for every one of us. And that always goes with our vision. Amen? Because the Bible says the Lord is a spirit. So in walking in spirit with your God, he will put that vision in your mind and give you the grace to accomplish, accomplish it. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you're going to ask, what is determination? Determination is the process of establishing something exactly by calculations or research. In other words, it is a firm of his intentions. Amen? Amen. You have a vision and you're going to take all risk in order to accomplish it. You're going to make a research for this to be achieved, God is needed. So anyone that has vision must have God on his table or her table. Amen? Amen. Because vision without God cannot be achieved the way God wants it. You may achieve it in other ways with a great payment, and at last, it's not going to be established because it has no roots. Anything that is not planted in a solid soil will not hold the ground. If a heavy breeze comes, it may fall. It's always making a shift that is not supposed to be. It's not going to be a lot. Our soil is God. When we have anything with God, it must be accomplished by the angels and the Holy Spirit. They are our helpers. Amen. Amen. But when we do it by ourselves, we will encounter a lot of things that is not required for it to be established. And because of that, we are going to the book of Art. Go with me, Art chapter 1, uh, 4, verse 1 to, 1 to 20, the book of Art, chapter 4. In our chapter one, uh, 4, verse 1, the priest and the captain of the temple guide and the saddles came up to Peter and John where they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus, the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the numbers of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Elias, the high priest, was there. And so were Cripphas, John, Alexander, and other men of high, high priest family. There, they had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what means do you do this? Mark it in your Bible. That is the challenge always being encountered. 
Everything from God goes with challenges. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, they said to them, you last and elders of the people, if we were being called to account today for an act of kindness, show to a cripple and ask how he was healed, then know this. You and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. That this man stood before you healed. He is the stone you build as rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to, man, to men by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they, they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that this man had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man, the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sahadri. And then confirm together, what are we going to do with this man? They ask. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows they have done an outstanding miracle, and we cannot deny it. Turn it off. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must want this man to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, judge for yourself whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Amen. Amen. Peter and John make a decision not to give up. Why are these people bothering about Jesus? Why are they worried about the doing of the Lord Jesus because the world is evil. Because they, they are afraid that with the name of the Lord Jesus, all that they are holding as tree will be delivered and liberated. Brothers and sisters, they are afraid that Jesus came to liberate us and set us free from the kingdom of darkness. And that is why you yourself got to understand as a child of God, there's always a challenge, spiritual challenges on your way. Anytime you make a decision to go with the Lord, you encounter a lot of questions. Where are you going? Who authorized you to make a decision? And who do you think that can save you out of our hands? You thought it's a joke, but I want to open your mind that it's not a joke. 
is a reality. Amen. Amen. We have seen a lot of people that decided to follow Jesus without knowing that there is a spiritual battle. Today, a lot of them are nowhere with the Lord Jesus. Why? Because they are they accepted their challenges and they they continue blaming God. They decided to give up instead of proving to their challenges that they know what they are doing. You got to understand. All we are going through now is a big challenges to our faith. As Peter and John refuse to give up, God is expecting I and you in every area of our life to stand still and know that he is God. No compromising. No matter the kind of question they are asking you. You've got to let them know that Jesus is the answer. Amen. Amen. Because they always ask a lot of questions in your business. Oh, you say you believe God, let God come and save you. Brothers and sisters, God will come and save you and prove to them that he is God. Amen. Amen. In your situation, every situation, even in your marriage, they always ask a question. You say you are a child of God. This problem will come from here. This problem is coming from here. They are looking at your words. Remember, evil spirit has ear as the Holy Spirit has ear. That's why James says, be mindful of your tongues. Speak less. Even when it is hurting you, Go into yourself and ask God grace. Oh, Lord, strengthen me. I need more grace. Amen? Amen. Even when the door closes and it seems that that door will not open, don't forget what he said. He says, when one door closes for you, he will open seven other doors. Other doors for you. Don't forget the word of God. And that is where you got to sit up. That, that, that this door closed does not mean that another door is not open for me. Your prayer will be, God, open my eyes and show me seven doors that you promise you open for me. And he will show you. Amen. Amen. Peter and John refuse to compromise. It remind them, take up by yourself if it is good for us to obey you or to obey God. Peter and John wanted, wanted them to know that the earth is of the Lord. Peter and John want, let them to understand they have no power to stop what God has started in their life. Because they ate, even themselves, they are of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Because God created everything and put it in position where it's supposed to be. Brothers and sisters, that you are afraid prove that you don't know the God that you are serving. That's why the Bible says, don't be afraid of any man, but be afraid of God. Who can kill the body and the spirit? But man can kill only the flesh, but they cannot touch the spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 8.
Romans chapter 8, I'm going to start 28 to 29. The Bible say, and we knew that in all things, God worked for the good of those who loved him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknown, he also predestined to be confirmed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the first fruit among many brothers, markets, that he might be the first, the, the, that for the law, for the, okay that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not be? How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justified. Who is he that condemns? Cried Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hands of God, and also interceding for us. Mark it. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or dangers, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. Amen. Amen. For the sake of the Lord. It says, we knew that in all things, we knew that all things work. All things God work for the good of those who love him. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. The first thing you got to check by yourself, you got to think. That's why you got to think, think, and think the wise. You got to think about your relationship with your God. You got to think how the light that God has put in you, how it's booming. You got to think about here, you know, with the angels and the Holy Spirit. So that they can stand by you and help you in time of trouble. Because a tree cannot make a forest. Amen. We need Holy Spirit and we need the angels. Our union with them is very important in this life, in this our journey. It says, for those God knows, he also predestined to be confirmed to the likeness of his son. You got to think about your God, because if God doesn't know who you are, no matter what, he will not predestine you. You got to let God know that you love him by separating yourself from a lot of things. No matter what, no matter how it is, 
you got to overcome a lot of spirits tormenting you and destroying the blessing of God upon your life. Amen. Amen. You got to pay the price. Without paying the price, it cannot work. <laughs> it says, is it trouble? Is it famine? Persecution? Nakedness? Danger? What will separate you from the love of God? Think about it. You got to think it and think twice. What will separate you from the love of your creator? Love of someone who died because of you, who paid a price, who suffered at the Mount of Calvary, just to open our wisdom and give us a new wisdom and a new understanding. That is why Jesus came to this world. To change our mindset and reposition us. That's predestined us. Amen? Amen. Jesus came to give us the inner understanding of whom you we are. Until you think about who you are, you can never, never love God with all your heart and all your mind. Until you understand that you are a special made child of God, you will never accept the word of God. It will always, always put, uh, put anger in your spirit. Anytime you hear the word of God, it seems as, oh, this person is wasting his time. This person doesn't know what to do. But the word of God is what we have to have in order to, Amend our ways of living. I wish that people will understand that there is power in the word of God. Every solution that we are looking for, this word of God can bring it in our society, in our country, and in our community. If this word of God can come to schools, all this killing in the school will change because where the Lord is, there is peace. Amen? Amen. Where the Lord is, there is progress. Wherever the Lord is, there is light. There is no other solution apart accepting God and his word in your home in the school, especially in the school. Because in the school is where we are motivated from one stage to another. So we have to start knowing who we are through the school to the level that we ourselves will have a real connection with God. Where God is, even if devil is there, the power of God is greater than him. All he will be doing is roaming about, but he cannot do, cannot do anything. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the first Corinthians 9. The book of first Corinthians 9. In the book of 1 Corinthians 9, 24, the Bible says, Do you not know that in a race all the learners learn, but only one gets the prize? Learn in such a way as to get the prize. <laughs> Everyone who competes in the game goes into straight training. They do it to get a crowd that will not last. But we do it to get a crowd that will last forever. Therefore, I do not know like a man learning. I'm Leslie. I do not fight like a man 
beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Amen. Amen. Paul is advising us to make a decision, a good decision, because he has already made a, a good decision that he will, he will see his God. And that is why he says, in a race, everybody longs to win the prize. But only one will win it because he has made a decision. He has a vision. He trained himself because he wants to win the crowd. Not others, not that others didn't train themselves. But every learner must have a secret. Amen? Mm -hmm. Every learner and every visionary must have a secret. For you to beat other people, for you to be among the best, you must have a secret. And the secret of Paul is that he has beat himself. He says he beat his body. That means he partnered his body and he positioned his mind. Without partnering your body, remember this body is very weak. You can dance to any music you, you put it in, but Paul refused to dance any music. He patched his body the way he cannot shift anyhow to anywhere. Brothers and sisters, Christianity, we are in. You got to pay the price with your body, your mind, your spirit, and your soul. It is not easy. If it's easy, Paul will not beat his body. Paul refused to be a drunkard because he was a drunkard before. Paul refused to join the group that are messing up because he himself has messed up before. He knows that he enjoyed it, but he decided to tell his body, enough is enough. Amen? Mm -hmm. Paul refused to be a womanizer, which he was before, because he was possessed with evil spirit. All these things are evil spirit. Paul decided to cleanse his body and govern his body. Paul decided to take authority over his body because if he didn't do that, his body will put him to shame. He says, I will never preach the word of God, the truth, the way of life. And that we live the way of life and go to hell at the last. Determination. A man falls seven times because he determined. He does not look at how he fall. All he do, he will be thinking how to not to fall again. He will be thinking another way so that he can stand well. He continued thinking. That is why he's fallen and getting up. He's fallen and getting up. He refused to lie down where he has fallen. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Many of you have given up in struggling and moving forward in whatever you are doing. Christianity is about everything around us. It's not only going making to heaven. Because if you are not happy here, think about it. Where is the glory of God? So it is a challenge that we all have. 
that the glory of God must be seen in my life. Amen? Amen. In whatever I'm doing, I God, I need your glory to be seen. I will never give up. Even if the world is turning upside down with you, God, all things are possible. Just what it needs is your relationship with your God, the Holy Spirit, and the angels to help you. Where even you are falling, let them help you and give you another way. You must love to make a chance. You must love to make to try another thing. Because a lot of time, children of God will look forward. But we are meant to look forward. Look at your right, look at your left, you look backwards. That is why God created it. You must always be a clockwise human being. You're gonna think, I'm doing these things like this, this year or this month, and it's not favoring me. Let me think another solution. You must always look for solution. Amen? Amen? You must always look for solution, not complaining. Because complaining is closing the door of your vision. But looking for solution will give you the grace and more power to overcome the challenges before you. Close your eyes. Father, we are coming to the closing of today. Where is that you have given to us? Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this word that is going to change the mind of a lot of people that thought that is over. Thank you, Asha Dai, for tomorrow we are coming back again. What we are going to hear will continue giving us the grace to move forward and be what you want us to be. Be honored. For I know that this word is going to be a sword against every spirit of laziness, every spirit of confusion, every spirit of complaining. We are not meant to be in that state of mind. Let this word renew our mind today, O oh Father God, to know that we are meant to fall and we are all meant to rise and shine. For you have said we are the light of the world. Be glorified, be honored for accomplish this, our meeting today with your signs and wonders and miracles. I always pray for healing. I pray for transformation. I pray for liberation and deliverance unto every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you wherever you are. As you start a new thing, knowing that Jesus loves you.